Okay, so we are live. We're live, we're live, we're live on Facebook. Just going to take this minute to share to the Facebook page. Hello, hello, Facebook. Welcome to Warriors of Light show. This is your girl, Joy Mohani. I'm here bringing you this especially requested conversation. I think this was requested by you, Vanessa, right? Last week, you were like, let's talk about dreaming. So today we're doing that, which is a very big part of our lives as uh, genetic path cartons. Okay, so say hello if you're on Facebook. If you're watching this as the replay on YouTube, as well as Facebook, hashtag replay. And yeah, just let me know where you're watching this replay. From where in the world are you? And as well as my... Uh, the warriors who are here watching and hanging out with me on Zoom, where in the world are you today? Okay. Hello, hello, Akona from South Africa, Johannesburg. Yay. We also have Vanessa from Tabantu, South Africa. Where, what is the region for Tabantu? I've never heard of that, that name before. Okay. Oh, y'all are saying like such difficult names. <laughs> Very back <back>, South Africa. <laughs> I know that's how to pronounce it. And then the free state. Okay, that's in the free state. Okay, cool. It's always nice to connect with you all. Thank you so much for joining. This is our transmission first days that we're doing here for Warriors of Light, season three. This is episode 30. So we keep pushing every Thursday. And today we are talking the art of active dreaming. This is a long conversation coming, I believe, because I've spoken there and there about dreaming, but I've never done a comprehensive transmission on dreaming. So we are going to be talking about that today. So play along with me and let's already jump in, okay? <sighs> so let's start up because, you know, I like to start up. Oh. Yes, I am live. Sorry, I am live on Facebook. On my page, Joy Mohani. And I think I have also shared, I've shared it to the, uh, our genetic path cutter group. Yes, yes. Hi, Larato and Quick is on Facebook. I am there. Okay, good. Okay, so let's jump in. Right. So the first things we need to register is that we exist in what we may call the physical world, but also we may call this world a dimensional reality, a dimension, right? And a dimension is something that we are able to perceive with our consciousness, not the eyes, our consciousness. And there are different types and levels of dimensions that do exist in our multiverse, all our universe, let's not go too broad, in our universe, right? So there are different dimensions. We currently exist that the current uh, title for our planet and where you are watching me today, this is third dimensional Earth, right? Third dimensional Earth. So that's where we are currently perceiving each other and interacting with each other. There are other dimensions that do exist that we are actually constantly also interacting with. We just don't have maybe awareness of what these dimensions are. But if you are spiritually gifted or you're a genetic path cutter, this is going to be part or it is part of your, your reality to perceive other dimensions beyond this realm. 
right? So when we talk about the ancestral realm, for example, we're talking about a dimension, a world that exists in a different dimension from this one, but it's not necessarily a different space from this one. I hope you're with me. It is actually mostly a different time and a different frequency, but it's often, in many ways, we could say we are in the same space, right? With the with with the ancestors, we're in the same space with the dragons. We're in the same space with the mermaids. It's just we are in different times. We are also in different um, frequencies. Are you with me? I know I just jumped us in there. PhD vibes. All right, so that's important to understand. So we have this third dimension. Then the next dimension that is close to us that we connect with almost every day, not almost every day we do connect with this dimension. It is the dimension, the fourth dimension, right? And the fourth dimension, it is the realm of dreaming. It is not necessarily called the realm of dreaming, but it is actually called the astral dimension. The astral dimension is made up of different aspects or kingdoms or spaces itself. So one of the spaces in the astral, it is the space in which we dream. Are you with me? So when you go to sleep every night, your consciousness is actually shifting from third dimensional earth and it's shifting to the fourth dimension, to the astral. Right, so your body is here, but your consciousness is not longer in the physical realm. It is in a different perspective. Although the space is the same, remember the space is the same. The difference now is the time. You are no longer in the same time. Your consciousness is no longer in the same time it was earlier today. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. So what are mystery school students are up in here? What do we do when we ask? When I ask? Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you, Kayla. You know the drill. <laughs> yes. So, yes. So, we are, we are constantly going to the astral dimension. Right? So, the astral dimension, let's talk a little bit about this dimension where we go to, to, to where we dream, where we access the dream realm, right? The astral is almost like a bridge, right? It is particularly made up of memory, right? Your personal memory are stored in the astral, your uh, collective and ancestral memories that are stored here, that are accessed here, the collective consciousness Right, because we, we we perceive ourselves as individual consciousnesses. We don't realize we actually also make up the collective consciousness. And the collective consciousness is existing here in this realm, right? And so that's where we actually access a lot of information about humanity and what's going on. And in fact, an example of how the collective consciousness is in the dream realm. This is how we learn language when we are babies, right? A baby actually first dreams of language and accesses whatever information they need about the language that they're supposed to learn about the language of their mother and father, right? And then from then on, the consciousness of the baby begins to pick this information from the dream and it starts to be like, oh, Baba, Mama. It started first accessing this from the dreamscape and then it brought it into the external world, right? So uh, we, there is a lot of memory uh, in, in the astral. There's also a lot of emotions, right? So a lot of the emotions that humanity feels during the day, some of these emotions, they're so big that humanity is not actually able to process them during the day. So these emotions, because they are so, huge, they go into the astral and then they are processed. Yes, yes, we do dream up language first. Do you know that when we are in our mother's womb, 
uh, whenever you do enter your mother's womb, the whole time you are there, you are actually in the dream state. I have a theory, it's not really based on truth, <laughs> but I feel like maybe the whole time you're in your mother's womb, you are probably dreaming about this life you're just about to have. You know, and then you are born and you forget that you dreamt everything. And sometimes when we have deja vu, it's like a little bit of like that time in your mother's womb when you actually dreamt of that event. And then you're like, I did, I did see this. That's my theory. It's not based on anything valid. It has not yet been proven by anyone <laughs> or corroborated by anyone. But that's what I think, because we are dreaming when we're in our mother's womb. Um, Yes, also depending on when does your consciousness soul come into your mother's womb? Because we all perceive that the soul arrives at the moment of conception. Nope. Some people come five months. Some, like Joy Mohani, I think I waited until the last minute because I actually came at when my mother was almost 11 months. I was refusing to come for whatever reason. Yeah. So, yeah. Who? So much energy. This energy, I think, uh, not I think, I know it's connected to the full moon. It's also connected to, uh, yeah, the photonic lights that have been happening this month. They are happening, leading us to one big portal that's coming through, uh, which is the 22nd of February. So we have a portal. It's in five days, right? It's in five days. So that portal is ushering us to this bigger, bigger timeline, right? So I don't know how you've been feeling. If you've been feeling overly sensitive, that's how I've been feeling and sore and wanting to sleep and needing to sleep is that portal. So right now, even my body is overly activated. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what was I saying? You all know how I just move <laughs> between ideas. So we're talking about the astral, right? that in the astral also there is memory, right? Um, remember how I also spoke about dimensions are really also about time, different times. So there's also time in there, memory, time, emotions, right? That's what we're interacting with every time we go to sleep, right? And because of that, that means that different dreams mean different things that you have. Sometimes a dream is about the emotional processing that you are going through, right? So let's say you had a fight today with a friend, right? And that night you dream of um, an earthquake, right? And in that earthquake, you are running and you're looking for your people and you can't find them, right? So that may not necessarily mean it's like a, it's about the Armageddon or end of world, it may actually really be about your emotional response to the event, the fight you just had with your friend. And your consciousness is using the idea of an earthquake as if something has been shaken about your relationship with your friend, that it, it is according to your inner child, it is similar to an earthquake. And so you are processing those emotions of pain, of panic, of head by playing that experience from an emotional perspective. But that emotional perspective, it's going to be through symbolism, through language, through objects that your mind is able to connect to a particular emotion, right? Does that make sense? So I want us to like stay here a little bit about dreams that are about our emotions because most of the time, I do feel that a lot of our dreams are connected to emotions, right? Uh, how can you identify that this dream that you are having is about you processing your emotions? Okay. So first thing, every person, every consciousness, which is every person, has what is called a dream landscape. Right? A dream landscape, it's similar to the way that you have a physical home where a lot of things happen. Right? So at this point, everyone is aware that our show happens in this space, right? 
um, it wasn't always this place. There was another place. It used to be different when I lived in a different place, but now you're getting used to this place, right? And that's where the show happens all the time. And in fact, if you were to dream of me and this show, you may just dream of this culture alone and I'm not even there. And then you, your mind is like, oh, that's joy because we now associate this couch with the show, right? And that's what consciousness likes to do. It, it just picks objects, symbols to represent an idea, to represent an experience, right? So every person has a dream landscape. A dream landscape is where a lot of your dream events happen, right? So it's often where your inner child feels at home, right? And often for most people, that's often where home was for you in the first 10 years of your life. Doesn't apply to everyone, but for me, for example, the first 10 years of my life, I lived with my grandmother in the village. So now every single night, not every single night, most nights, I dream all my dreams. It doesn't matter what I'm dreaming about. Last night, I dreamt about LL Cool J because recently I was watching the movie Deliver Us From Eva, if you remember that movie. So I dreamt him last night, but we were in my grandmother's home the whole entire time because my grandmother's home is my dream landscape, right? So I want you to think, you may have not observed that your dreams all happen. There's always something constant, right? It's either your grandmother's yard or maybe it's under a tree or a river. There's just something constant and that constant is essentially your dream home or your dream world, right? Yes, so let me know. If, if you remember or you are observing or coming to deeper awareness of what your dream landscape is. Let me drink my water. Hmm. Right, so your dream landscape is where Yeah, it's where there is a deeper emotional connection and a sense of safety. So what I have come to realize through actively working with my dreams, I've come to realize a lot of the dreams I dream in my dream landscape, where I can see that I am at my grandmother's home, they are often about the present moment as in events happening and I am processing them. For example, how I am dreaming, how I dreamt of LL Cool J because I recently watched this movie and I thought, oh, what a hot, handsome dude, you know? And so of course my consciousness brought him in. It wasn't really about LL Cool J, it was probably a representation of the masculine. And I just pulled him, my consciousness pulled him as the most recent engagement of what I imagined to be a reflection of a warrior masculine, right? Because in the dream, he was like a warrior. He was fighting, he was very epic. It felt like I was watching a movie, <laughs> yes. So in that moment, I know that it, I was engaging with, when I say the present moment, this includes actual events that have been recently happening. This includes my current uh, obsessions, attentions, my current focus, my current, my current wishes. So this is where Sigmund Freud calls, calls it a wish fulfillment, that there are some of your dreams that are your wish fulfillment, right? This is, you are, your, you are trying to fulfill your wishes. Your wishes. Obviously in the dream, I was uh, a beloved of LL Cool J. So that's my wish probably. I don't really have a wish to be, a beloved of Elo Kuje, but like I said, he was just presenting. <laughs> he was a, a mirror of a deep desire of a warrior king, masculine, right? Yes. So, so often when you dream of your dream landscape, it's where you are processing. It's where you are dealing with emotions that are current, that are 
um, active in your life, okay? Also, your dream landscape is often the realm of your inner child, your higher self as well, and your ancestors as well, right? However, most people think that our ancestors will always come to us, for example, in the form in which they were in. But sometimes you could be dreaming of someone. For all I know, this Elo Kuje is a warrior ancestor of mine who came to fight whatever energies I was dealing with last night, right? So sometimes, but what is essential about what I'm talking about is that this is about current energies. What is in your field? What are the frequencies your consciousness, the imprints your consciousness is currently dealing with from the physical realm and in other levels of reality where you as a consciousness are existing or influenced, right? Okay. Okay, so yes dreaming of primary schools or childhood neighborhoods that's an example of a dream landscape right um dreaming of home as well so some people it may not be home so uh lady Portia, you're saying that you've never dreamt of the same place what i want you to start doing moving forward i will share a specific invocation to do with your dreams in, towards the end what I want you to do though, is to start to observe what is the constant in all your dreams because there is always a constant. So maybe it's not about home for you. Maybe there's always a tree, maybe there's always a bed, maybe there's always a color white, maybe there's always a number, whatever it is, your consciousness will put it there. Or if you begin to, to invoke and you begin this art of active dreaming. Active dreaming is essentially about actively knowing that your dreams can respond to you and you can engage with them further than you may have been doing because maybe you thought they're not important. Dreams are important. They are very valid, real experiences that we are having. Yes, could be people from home. How do you mean, Waria? Right, so mine is never the same. Uh, it's always about childhood, home, and high school. Yes, okay, great. Yes, so it's so the, the, the this dream about a constant doesn't mean all the time you dream of your your landscape, right? I'm going to explain what I have come together. This does not mean it applies to you, but perhaps it may make you think, and you can go and engage further. So for me, I've discovered that. My landscapes are about the present moment. When I dream of being somewhere I've never been, I understand, I've come to understand, I am dealing with memories that are not, one, I'm dealing with future timelines, things that are yet to come. So that's why my mind cannot put them into my grandmother's because there is the symbols that I don't recognize. So I will see myself in a road, I'll see myself in a different city, someone's home and so on. So I'm either interacting with a future event that's going to happen or I'm interacting with a memory that happens to be connected to me, but it's not from this lifetime. So this could be an ancestral memory or I'm dealing with a soul memory, right? And often in these, in these dreams where I'm not in my landscape, I will still interact with people I probably know. Most of the time, there's always someone you do know in the dream, right? But this is where what we call epic dreams often happen. Our epic dreams are about prophecies when you're seeing a future event. Right? So most often an epic dream may be happening in an ocean, you've never seen a mountain or a village, a city up in the sky, right? These are often these epic dreams. You are dealing with something bigger than your personal issues and your personal experiences, right? 
So let's explain different types of epic dreams. So there are epic dreams that are elemental dreams, right? So stay with me. This is the one that uh, we often say they're connected to our ancestors, right? Elemental dreams. Elemental dreams, we have five elements, right? Water, earth, air, fire, and the ether. So any dream that has these elements, where there is fire, there is water, there is winds, you know, air, there is uh, the ether, you feel like you're up in the stars or something. Um, the earth itself, maybe you are at the mountains or you are in a forest and so on. These often are connected to earth memories. These are connected, yes, to your ancestors. These are also connected to elements that your soul is connected to. So that may be your origins. Right. So if you dream a lot about water, maybe your consciousness is a water being. Hence why you dream often of the water. Perhaps you dream often of the mountains. It may be that, yes, you are a, an earth being. You are part of the inner earth uh, realm or dimensions. Right. So you are probably you have your consciousness has went home and that's why these dreams, when we wake up, they are quite powerful. And sometimes, yes, it's there are also literally conversations you're having with your ancestors, bloodline ancestors, as well as elemental ancestors. Right? Yes. So Often with these dreams, these epic dreams, they are big messages for you that these are prophetic dreams. These are dreams that may be alerting you of something yet to come. And if you're being alerted, it means it's important, right? Um, and then also elemental dreams. They are also sometimes a message that they, the guardians are giving you. So if you dream of the water, what does water represent, right? One, water represents memory. Water is uh, a, a, a cleansing, one of the most cleansing elements, right? Through it, there is cleansing. It also represents purity. It's also a feminine frequency. It's about the Holy Mother, right? And the divine feminine. So the grandmother's water is also sometimes representing a beginning, right? So when you are dreaming of that, it may be that that's a message that you are in, it's time to go cleanse, it's time to begin a new, it's time to heal the feminine or connect with the feminine, right? So a lot of the time we get stuck in thinking that like there has to be like a bigger expansive meaning or to that dream and there may be, but this is the key to dream interpretations of epic dreams. You almost have to kind of like, <laughs> I was gonna say, dumb yourself down and take it literally, right? So as in, if you see, if you see a tree, you have to go to the basic understanding of what a tree is, right? What is a tree? A tree is a plant. A tree is um, a, a kingdom that's connected to the roots, right? A tree is connected to the tree of life. Oh, okay. So if I'm dreaming of these trees, I'm definitely looking at my tree of life. If I'm dreaming of trees, this is about my roots, where I come from. It's not that, it doesn't have to be bigger than that. It's literally that. That's why they put the tree in there. Like your consciousness and your support team is putting the tree as a way for you to pick it quickly. That, oh, this is about the roots. This is about my life. The branches as different aspects of my life. That's there is a message here around me dealing with the roots where I come from, me dealing with the branches of my life. Right? So even with these elements, if you dream of fire, what does fire represent? You know, fire is this quickening, purifying element, 
right? So I am definitely due for purification. I need to purify. There are certain things in my life that need to bend away. It's time to let go. It's time to let go, right? Does that make sense? Are you with me? So you have to take it kind of like literally. They, they're not trying to trick you. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Okay. So is it just clear or I, uh, everyone else were just like, ooh, where are we? Facebook, how are you doing? Fine. So essentially, the beginning of your dream work is to take it literally. Then there are some dreams that are obviously easy to, uh, to, to kind of like get the meaning of them. So for example, this is what I, I and other people have associated dreams like this. When you dream of, for example, being at the airport, what does that mean? Dreaming of the airport, what is the airport about? The airport is about travel. It's about going to a different place, right? So when you're dreaming about the airport, it means you're dreaming about a next layer or level of your life. You are traveling, you, there is a shift happening within you, right? So a lot of dreams about roads, cars, this is a traveling dream. So it's talking about a travel, an experience you are in, a, a journey you are currently going in. And that's why when we are going through the healing or initiation journey, we tend to dream these specific dreams of travel, of being in a car, in a road, of being in a strange place, because you are going to these other timelines during those periods of your life. Right. So, but what if the people in the dreams are doing things you don't associate with? Okay, great question. So, so this one will be trippy, but this is, I believe, 101 of active dreaming, right? So this is the first thing you need to eliminate in your dream interpretation before going to other potentials of what that dreams means, okay? So we spoke about like dreams being about emotions. Some of them are about our memories, right? The experiences we've had. So that's why sometimes you dream of a past event and so on. And then the other dreams are about time, right? About different times in your life, right? Which is kind of still connected to memory, but different times. Okay. Uh, I once shared a dream uh, last year or where I dreamt that I was in my grandmother's house. And at the time I was going through something uh, like a spiritual initiation that was really shaking things up for me. And in that dream, I dreamt going to my grandmother's house and finding out that the entire walls had just come out like there was an earthquake that happened. But the earthquake seemed like it came from the house, like underneath the house, and then it just collapsed only the foundation while everything else was standing. Right? I want to use this as an example so that we can have like a bit of a reference. And then in the dream as I'm entering, I am with my grandmother who is currently living, she's alive. So I'm with my grandmother and I'm like, what is happening here? What happened? And as I'm saying this, I see my baby sister. She's there and she's crying, her eyes are swollen. And I'm like, what happened to her? You know. And as I am saying that, my uncle, uh, those who have followed me for some time, they know about my uncle. He's one of the people who have influenced my path in psychology and spirituality in that um, I, I, I never know how to say it because it's so, it's, so, it's so strange. But ever since I was young, he has always had mental spiritual problems has never really functioned in like in a way that we may call normal, right? 
I believe it's connected to post-traumatic post stress disorder because he was a soldier, but he hasn't been functional since 97. So that my uncle created such a big imprint in my life that I always wonder what happened to him? Because even though he has this post-traumatic stress disorder and probably other things that I have not yet been able to diagnose because he has never been my patient, um, he, he's still incredibly smart. He reads everything under the sun and he can talk to me about these concepts that I'm talking to you about. And then he still can't get a job, a regular job. And it's like, I can't connect this. So anyway, I dreamt of him passing in the, in the house. And I was asking my grandmother, is it him? Is he the one who did this? And my grandmother said, it was not him. This happened from the inside. But the, it seems like there was an attack here, right? So when I woke up, I mean, it took me quite some time to realize that every single person in this dream, my grandmother, my sister, my uncle, they were all aspects of myself, right? My sister is representing my inner child, right? My grandmother is my higher self or my ancestor. And my uncle is the fragmented aspect of me or the part of me that I reject or I'm terrified of. Sometimes that may be what we call the sinful self, the person that I, I just want to disconnect from, right? That's why I blamed him. I was like, he's the one who did this, right? But all of these, they were not, they were all me. It's just I, my consciousness pulled different people into my life to represent the event that I was going through where I was spiritually shaken. And that's why this house, which is representing my spiritual house, had uh, like it, it was falling apart from the ground up because my spiritual foundation was being shaken up, right? Almost like an earthquake. And um, the, the way that my spiritual, the, the event itself, it was actually another person who created this shakeup in my life. That's why my grandmother, my ancestor was like, it came from outside. It was not anyone here, right? So what I'm trying to say and share with this dream is that these dream elements, people you will never associate, these are often aspects of yourself. Right, we need, to, this is the first thing you should always do with a dream. You have to first eliminate, could it be just you? Could it be that everything you're seeing in there is about you? Just that you have put in different people to represent aspects of yourself. That is the first elimination. If you could eliminate that, then we can go into, maybe it's about you processing actual events that happened with people, or maybe it's you seeing future timelines. Right. And then then it could also be that you are perceiving. Um, the shadows of other people. Right. Events that other people are engaged in. And often that is probably connected to those who we call dreamers, interdimensional dreamers. So while everyone dreams, there are certain people who have the gift of dreaming. They can dream future timelines. They can see events, memories that are not necessarily about themselves. So that will be, that will be a different case altogether. That's if that's your template, right? So although for me, I am a very active dreamer and I've been one my whole life, I'm not a, an interdimensional dreamer. I don't see a lot of events in the dream state. I see them as visions, right? But if you have that as a gift, of course, then you're probably perceiving that and it's a real event, right? So then that would be a, a, a gift template, but that doesn't apply to everyone. In fact, people who are dreamers, they're not as many as you may imagine. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes, Mukuru Menzi, <laughs> so good to see you here. Yes, it's about your own psyche, definitely. Yes, okay. 
So what was the other question? So remember how I said um, the astral, where we, there are different levels and layers of the dreamscape, right? There is aspect of it where it's about our memories and the collective consciousness. And that's where we go to, to, to dream. And then there is what we call the lower astral. And the lower astral is where I, this is how I interpret it. Other people will say it differently, right? Um, the lower astral is where fragmented consciousness, our traumas, our great traumas as individual as well as the collective are existing. What we call egregores, right? Egregores have been um, historically represented as dark entities or dark shadows, right? Um, or forces, right? But often egregores themselves, they're different forms of egregores. However, some of the egregores that we often interact with in our dreamscape, an egregore, it's, it's so when something traumatic happens, there's an energy that is emitted from that traumatic event. And that energy will actually circulate around the people who are part of that trauma. But if that trauma is so big that you know, the people are not able to deal with it, handle it, their psyche cannot deal with it, they project it out and push it out of their subtle bodies. And then that energy of the trauma, of that pain, literally morphs and take a, a form. And that form, if that trauma is not dealt with, that form can actually begin to gain consciousness and it begins to exist as a living entity. And we often hear about, this is my experience after working with um, women who have experienced sexual trauma, for example. So we hear about like, uh, in churches, they may call that a spiritual husband, right? What I found is that when we have experienced sexual violence, that trauma, especially let's say it was in the home, it's so big that we are unable to deal with it. So we push it out and an egregore is born. And I have seen this with my vision when I go to certain homes. And this egregore will, will become or enter part of the psychic climate of the home and it will exist as that fragmented aspect of the home. And this egregore, the more it's not addressed, the more it, its power, its energy builds up. Until at some level, if, if in fact, if that violence keeps happening, it can gain power and it will, it will begin to attach to those who are part of that trauma, those who experience it, as well as those who are doing that that violence, right? And then that will be, what do we call this first one? Yeah, so different entities that you may know of the names. Sometimes those are literally egregores. They were created by trauma, unprocessed trauma, and then they exist. I personally cannot really say much about other forms of entities. I don't have any experience in them, but often, the lower astral is where, yes, that's the word. The lower astral is where these egregores will exist. This is where also fragmented fallen consciousness that has done atrocities, violence in the world will also exist, right? In this lower astral. And sometimes we interact with these lower astral in the dreamscape, maybe because we are currently moving through a similar imprint right? Like in your life, something has been triggered and then it caused in these lower energies from the astral, the lower astral. The lower astral is different from our normal dream land, but it's still in the same dimension. Another part of the fourth dimension that exists is it's also where people pass when they are transitioning. They pass the same dimension. So if you have the, the, those people who do dream of people who are about to transition, what that means is that you have the sight to see who just passed, 
the astral to go to the fifth dimension for them to begin what we call the battle state, which is a process you go through after you transition, right? So there are different gates in the dimension that we interact with. Sometimes it's just a normal emotional dream, your own psyche. Sometimes, yes, you are actually interacting with the lower dimension. And often when do we interact with the lower dimensions? It's for healers. Um, we are interacting with the lower dimensions when we are going through collective karmic imprints clearing, right? As I've mentioned in my updates the other day, we are currently doing a lot of karmic cleansings. So if you've been having dreams that have connotations of dark forces, dark energies, egregores, that's because you're doing a karmic cleansing. So it's like you actually have to deal with that. Right, so that will be, it means your consciousness is going to the lower dimension and dealing with these fragmented consciousnesses, right, or fallen consciousnesses, right. However, I think what's important is to not move with this incredible fear towards these consciousnesses because if it's coming up in your dreamscape, it is important. It means your consciousness wants to deal with it. It matters, right? So if you are a person who have a lot of nightmares, there is an aspect of you that is wanting to heal and it keeps bringing these frequencies of shadows of darkness to your field so you can deal with them and process them. Sometimes the dealing is not so much of fighting the dreamscape, but maybe it's time to go to therapy and process your sexual trauma. Then you will start feeling, you, you stop feeling like there is something that happens at night for you in terms of that egregore that's often connected to sexual trauma and the women. The, there are also consciousnesses. These consciousnesses, all of them are connected to pain and unprocessed pain. And it's important to get that because if you don't get that, yeah, it's like, yeah, you will collapse, you, you, will leave, you will leave your power away because you think they have more power than you. They're all about pain, right? They're mirrors for pain, yeah? Yes. <clears throat> so uh, let me see this question, I wanna answer it. Um, so how do you get rid of the entity? So these, uh, this entity, I want to one day do another conversation. I want to talk about it because I think as women, we have experienced this egregore. So this egregore often is called Azazel, right? So the Azazel entity, I don't know what it's called, honestly, in my language. If you know, let me know. Um, so the Azazel consciousness, it's, it often appears as a masculine, it's a fragmented masculine that siphons or drains the life force of the feminine, right? So as women, we have a life force. This life force is called the Nala life force. I call it that. It's also called the Sophianic life force. It's the life force that's connected to Mother Earth. We hold it in our womb, right? So when we go through trauma, a particularly sexual trauma, that that this part of your your body the womb gets fragmented and broken by this trauma and it creates an opening in what we call your light body and when you have that opening every ghost remember most of the time especially if trauma has happened at the home that means that probably you may not be the first person to go through this in your bloodline and so that means that every goal has been running in the bloodline and affecting different women who went through the same trauma, right? So it is an old energy that has been unprocessed by the different uh, ancestors or your family members, right? So when your light body gets fragmented from that trauma, that egregore will gravitate towards you because you're holding the frequency of the same pain and it moves towards you. It's crazy what I will say, but I often feel like if you could look at it from a higher dimension that this aggregate actually wants you to heal. It's not trying to really torment you, or you could just say it really does. I guess in some way it does, but there's, 
an invitation for you to seal back your light body, right? Because it got uh, uh, attacked uh, through the, the violation. So we need to seal it back, right? And to seal it back is to heal the trauma and seal your light body. And this is how, like, this is where the quantum healing comes through. This is how working with Christ energy, Sophianic energies, and so on will help with sealing that. And once it's sealed, that egregore, there won't be anything magnetizing it to you anymore. So it will stop coming, right? So that's how you do heal um, uh, that entity, right? So yes, often what I do find is that, especially if this trauma happened in the family, it, it, it is, inherited in some way and there are levels where sometimes you as a genetic path cutter you inherited it like chose to inherit that trauma so you can come and deal with it and, and heal it so that it doesn't continue to torment the women in your bloodline right have you noticed like that that pattern of how if there is that kind of trauma in the family there's always another woman girl child who has also experienced that in the family right it's that that frequency and someone has to come and heal it i i, I remember we we spoke in the beginning of warriors of light in one of the conversations why genetic path cutters for example often have uh sexual trauma and i believe the reason why we we do often choose this mission where we will carry that frequency, it is so that we can come and heal it because the worst thing to ever happen in our planet is the collapse of the, the feminine, particularly the womb, because the womb connects us to the portal of the Holy Mother, right? And we actually don't know how incredibly powerful the womb is. I don't think we do. Right, but it's it, it's enough to power up this entire planet and to heal entire illnesses. And so that's why it has been targeted. So as a genetic path cutter, if you've went through this trauma, there's an aspect of you that has come to deal with a very ancient wound, right? And uh, I do believe that you've you have chosen that in some way to because you you do have the medicine within you to heal it as well. It doesn't make it any easier, any simple, it doesn't make it any fair, but it's important to have that awareness such that you don't actually collapse into disempowerment and feel like, oh, I'm just stuck with this energy. You are never stuck with this energy. You have within you everything to actually heal it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, okay. So, yes, I've heard of the book of Enoch Mukulu. Do you have this book? I would like to, to read more about Azazel because I am constantly in my work because I, I am actually very passionate around, about healing sexual trauma for the women. That's a, a, a frequency I deal with quite a lot. So let me know where I can get this book. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, definitely. Thank you, Mukulu. Ah, okay, I will definitely check it out online. Okay. Do you have any questions? I feel like I've, I've explained a little bit about the dream world, maybe what I will explain about. So in the dream world, we can access, yes, our memories, our emotions. We can also access different times and we can also access the lower astrals, right? But we can also access the higher astrals, right? So the higher astrals, this is where we can literally connect with our ancestral, helping guides, our support team to receive healing, 
right? This is where we can connect with the mother portals as well to receive healing as well, right? I think that these dreams are often so epic that sometimes we don't even remember them. But if most genetic path cutters, we do go to these higher worlds as well when we go to the dream scheme. Yesterday, there was an element of my dream where I knew I was in the higher worlds because yeah, it just was so epic. I was like, oh my God, we are dreaming. I was aware that I'm dreaming that it was quite gorgeous, right? So there is also that, that we can also, it's not just about the, the <laughs> dramas of planet Earth and the lower astral and our ancestral miasmas. It's also that we receive training here. Initiates, oracles, shamans, we go and receive training here. That's why this is a huge part of the initiation process, right? Um, you, you will connect with your guides in the dreamscape because they're able to meet us there. While it's difficult for them to truly materialize in the third dimension while it's like, like with my eyes open like this, <laughs> um, they can connect with us in the higher aspects of the astral and we can receive a training, direct information, direct uh, healing, miraculous healing, also in the higher world, right? And so that's part of why there is a need for initiation, right? It's because when you go through initiation with a mentor, they will take your consciousness or guide your consciousness through the different processes that they use, whether that's them working with the elementals, with medicine, to support your consciousness in going to the higher worlds to receive initiation activations of your keys, your blueprints, your, um, your templates, right? So that does happen. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So what about if you don't remember your dreams? Okay. So one, every single person dreams, right? Because dreaming is as, as natural to us as the waking life. So it's important to, to know that. Often though, when we don't remember our dreams, a huge part of our dreams before we go through initiation, they are often about our own emotional stuff and our own ancestral and soul miasmas, right? So because of that, if we have went, one, the reason why you may not remember your dreams can be just very simply that you never thought it was important to remember your dreams. So you never cultivated your mind trained your conscious mind to retrain that information, the dream information or experiences, right? And then two, often the biggest block for most people, if it's even, even if you do desire to remember your dreams, it is often trauma. So when we are too traumatized from the experiences of our, our physical lives, we will shut down our dream life. Why? Because the dream is the entryway to the subconscious. And in the subconscious, your traumas are there. They are raw. They're palpable. They're very active. So when we haven't processed these traumas and we're afraid to process them, what we do is we shut down our memory so that we do not remember these processes. Even though every night we do experience dreams, we do process, we do enter our subconscious realm, right? And we do enter the other realms I've spoken about that are part of the fourth dimension, right? So if you don't remember, it may be because your inner child does not feel safe in remembering. And the idea is not to try to force yourself to remember what you can rest. What you can know is that you are definitely dreaming. It's not possible to not dream, right? And there are ways to try to bring back the, those dreams. What I have seen is organically, every time you heal your traumas, the dreams will begin to come back to you. Just organically, because the thing that was blocking them, which was the trauma, is no longer there. So you can begin to remember them, right? So if you are not remembering your dreams, my focus will be to heal whatever it is that I think my consciousness is not ready to see. Because likelihood is that 
your experiences, your subconscious realm will reflect them as very scary dreams, nightmares, right? So probably at some point you made a vow that I don't want to remember these dreams because they stress me out. I always just have nightmares every night, right? So focusing on your healing. And once you've healed enough and your light body is strong, right? So the part of us that has the dreams is the astral body, which is not this one, right? It's not the physical body. So that astral body itself, it has to be strong to handle seeing the trauma that it has went through in the dreamscape. So if it's, it's not strong, it, it will rather not remember. So it's actually a powerful defense mechanism. So I wouldn't worry too much and obsess about remembering if I know that I, there are some trauma experiences I've been through that I may be not ready to deal with just yet. However, dreams are the most powerful ways in which we can heal. As you begin your healing journey, you can invoke your consciousness before you go to sleep, right? There are certain affirmations you can make. When I was, I think 16, I used to make these affirmations for two weeks every day. I will tell, I will, before I go to sleep, um, I will say, dear higher self, I don't think I said higher self, then I wasn't like super aware of the word higher self, but I will say, dear self, uh, please make me remember my dreams when I wake up. Please make me remember all my dreams when I wake up. And I will say this 10 times before I go to sleep, right? Um, and I swear to you, ever since I was 16, I have always remembered not only one dream, but the many dreams I dream. I had to do it for two weeks and then my consciousness got it, right? In any times where I don't remember my dreams, it is usually because I am sick, I am tired, and I'm just choosing to not remember them. But in most times, which is like 95% of the time, I'm always remembering my dreams because I did that invocation. You may have to, I did it for two weeks, depending on where you are at, you may have to do it longer, but it will happen. You need to understand, I spoke about this last week, that we are constantly commanding. We are more in control of what happens in our dream life and even physical life than we realize. And we need to engage with this power that we are co-creating, that you can command something and it will be done, right? You can connect with source to say, source, I am ready to remember my dreams, right? Please begin bringing them, right? And if they do not come, it means literally yourself, your higher self, your source is saying, not yet. You are not yet ready. This will be too much because the dreams, when they do come, if you're a genetic path cutter, they're gonna be quite active and filled with so much energy, right? Yes. Does that make sense? I hope that helps. Um, so, okay, so then what happens if you do feel like you always have nightmares? I think someone asked here, what if you always dream of, of the darkness? What was that? Oh, okay. What, uh, what do you mean by darkness? Is it dark? It's like nighttime? Or are you talking about nightmarish, scary energy? Right? So, so one thing to bring into awareness is that which is dark sometimes is actually the, the womb of creation. That is the, the holy mother you are connecting with. So if you're constantly dreaming of it being nighttime, there's definitely a lot of feminine energy around you, the holy mother frequency, because creation actually does not come from light, it comes from the dark and it's ushered into the light, into that which is visible, right? So that's the first thing about, like there are a lot of people who think seeing darkness means evil. Sometimes it's really the holy mother frequency, right? Um, and then if it's about the shadows, then definitely that means there is aspects of your experiences that are wanting to be healed, your shadows that are wanting to be healed. Yeah. 
sorry. Hmm. Okay, so sometimes, okay, so there's always entities. So um, I, one, I would like you to do a review of the kind of experiences that you've had in your childhood and begin to heal those definitely, right? Um, yes, okay, so you definitely do need to do your own shadow work because we don't want to always assume we're seeing this, these shadows as an actual real energy when it could just be our subconscious processing our own traumas, right? And then another thing I would do is actually do a bit of research on my family of origin to find out what has happened. If in our family of origin, there were actual events that were quite traumatic events like murder, for example, or suicide, or it's just certain really traumatic ways in, people tra in, in which people transition. Sometimes those will come in your dreamscape, especially if you're a genetic path cutter, you are not always just dreaming about you. Sometimes you are seeing your ancestral memories. So those people you're seeing that actual memories coming from your ancestry, right? And also Lorraine, it may actually be that that's a gift you have. You are actually perceiving the, the collective shadow of humanity. So you are actually seeing real events, not events, timelines, but they're just presenting themselves in ways that's scary, but it's really about the shadow, the collective shadow of the human race, right? Yes. Um, so if you do dream of such scary dreams, uh, there is prayers you can make, right, as well. Uh, I have shared this prayer actually in my Telegram group. I have a Telegram group. I will share with you all the link. Go and join. There is a prayer that I, you can use every night if you have like scary dreams to say it so that it dissolves and disconnects you from the lower astral if you're having a lot of lower astral dreams. But this has a lot to do with what we call dream webbing matrices that pull you into these these inorganic fields, artificial fields, terrifying timelines, right? So um, I will, I think it's in my Instagram, not now, but just send me a DM, I'll send you the link to my Telegram and then I'll put the prayer there. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay, so Palisa, you're, so you're talking about like, feeling really exhausted and having like a marathon of dreams, right? So um, another reason why we have certain dreams, these are actually higher aspects of ourselves that are engaging in actual events that are happening in other worlds, in other dimensions, probably the higher worlds dimension five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and beyond, right? So we need to understand that these aspects of ourselves that have access and that are existing in those other dimensions. So you hear how people talk about how we were at war last night, you know, and we were fighting and the fight, the war was happening maybe in the seventh dimension or eighth dimension and so on. So certain people, particularly genetic path cutters have not only the ability, but the access to do that. They've been approved to also engage in other world events outside planet Earth. So these are off planet, right? And so when you come back exhausted, it's because it was really happening. You were fighting, you were a warrior somewhere in some other dimension, in some other time, in some other aspect of this multiverse. So you come back really exhausted. So particularly you will notice that these exhausted or intense dreams, they often happen during what we call portal days, right? So for example, the full moon is a portal. It opens up our world to influences of other um, planetary entities, not entities, planetary forces, right? And cosmic forces. So the moon, for example, which is an entire conversation, right, influences us in certain ways. It's a portal, and during those portal 
there is sometimes where foreign consciousness will come through during those times. And those of us who are grid workers, we are actually working at night, clearing whatever energies are coming into our planet. So that's why we wake up really exhausted. Like today, I've just been napping because last night was really crazy, right? Because of these dreams. Um, and another, what was I gonna say? So even when this portal, 22 February, this is a big, big portal. So the days leading to these big portals are quite intense in terms of the dreams that we are having, right? So you wanna be really extra uh, careful, uh, sensitive with yourself, like take care of yourself, drink water, do take those naps, write your dreams as you wake up because what you are seeing are actual timelines that are actually being killed. Um, at higher levels. Even if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you are doing this because the part of you doing this is already initiated. It is already the oracle, the shaman. It knows what I am talking about, even though your current personality doesn't know, right? So those are actual timelines that are draining you. That's why you wake up exhausted. Yeah. Okay. It's hectic. <laughs> I don't show. Okay, so let me see this question. Okay, so this one is for those people who are able to see those who are moving to other dimensions, those who are transitioning, right? So this is a gift, it's a template. Not everyone has the ability to see that part of the fourth dimension. Right? So it means your eyes are able to see that. And if you are able to see that, um, you, you are almost like a midwife of the battle state or the death process. So the way to cultivate that gift, uh, if you are yet to be initiated into it, is to obviously work with prayer, with words, with um light to support those humans you are seeing transitioning. Sorry, yeah, so uh, yes, praying for those souls, praying that they have, uh, we call it safe passage, right? Uh, it's important to know that when we transition, we don't automatically go into a resting place. We go, we continue on a journey, right? It's, it's quite a long journey. Um, that a soul go, takes to go back home fully. So if you are a midwife, what you can do is you can pray for these souls, particularly the next three months after the transition, because that soul is not yet home. So you need to pray for them. It means because you can perceive it, you can influence and affect that realm. So I would pray if I had that gift. Yes, okay. Uh, so one of the most powerful prayer I, you could do is the Hopo Nono prayer. I don't know if that's how to say it. The, the bringing into your awareness the soul of that person and then telling them, I am sorry, please forgive me. I love you and I thank you. And you want to repeat that as regularly as you can. The reason why you want to do that is that one of the emotions that traps our consciousness is the emotion of guilt. When people feel like they didn't do this lifetime the way that they expected and they have guilt and with feelings of shame as well. Sometimes that may make that journey become quite difficult. So when you have a voice that can go to that realm, honestly, this can also be done by everyone. But if you particularly have this gift, that means it, it, it can really go there, you know, uh, I'm assuming. I believe, I'm choosing to believe. So yeah, you want to pray. I've seen fundamental changes when I pray for people who I know may be going through guilt and shame and seeing actual collapse, like shifts happening to these people um, if they're leaving, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, that's what you should do. 
And I spoke about this last year. Um, I spoke about how right now there is a lot of influx of souls that are leaving planet Earth, which is why if you have this gift, you really do have to use that gift. We need help. They need help. The souls that are transitioning, most of them are in shock. They were not expecting this probably in the, from that physical personality. So you want to support them. Yeah. So if those people who transition years ago and come back now asking to move into the afterlife, plus 10 to 20 years, will it have effect on? Yes, it will definitely have effect. It doesn't matter when this person has transitioned, right? If they come to you in the dreamscape, you can definitely impact um, that transition if you pray for them. If you are a genetic path cutter, it's a gift you have, you know, yeah. Okay, so one final question. Are we good? Let me know what spoke to you today. So in the past, I've been dreaming about being chased down by a lion, no matter how many other people I'm with. It's always getting specifically for me any thought on what this could mean. So one of the things that my students like uh, sorry, no, is that I don't like to interpret people's dreams because it's a very personal to you. So if I am interpreting it, I'm going to interpret from my perspective, which means I'm already wrong, probably. I will only assign meaning that are meaningful to me to your dreams. But what I would do in that dream to try to understand it is to look at the main element there, which seems to be the lion, right? That there's always this lion. First of all, the lion is part of the, the animal kingdom, which often interact with humanity as a spirit animal, as power animals, as our totems, right? So they are medicine that those specific totems and spirit animals and power animals hold for us, right? So. I want you to go do elimination. Elimination is like, are you actually, is this your totem, right? And if it's your totem, it's time to call you to your medicine of your people, for example, right? So eliminate if, it's, if, if there is any relationship to the lion itself, if it could be your spirit animal, your Oh, okay. Briefly got disconnected, but I am back. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Yes, so... Yes, so yeah, um, the, the dream about the lion. So yes, I will eliminate if it's connected to me in any way, in terms of like it, it representing medicine for my DNA, for my bloodline. And then I will also just look at it as what the lion represents. The lion just definitely is the king of the animal kingdom. It represents leadership and so on. Is there any part of your life that is connected to leadership and maybe you are running away <laughs> and leadership is chasing you? <laughs> leadership is actually chasing you and you are running away denying your responsibility right so eliminate that eliminate it first from your personal perspective and experiences so look at it quite objectively before then moving to so objectively as an assess in what way is it connected to you with what you know about yourself right and then 
then move into the emotions that of the dream. You know, as it's chasing you, what are you actually feeling? Are you terrified out of your wits? Right? If you process that emotion, what does that emotion connect you with? What does it remind you of? Right? Um, yeah. And then keep going down and down and down and see. Already just from this elimination, let me know if there's already something coming up for you. Right? It just feels like such a regular totem spirit animal dream. Right? Because I've had my, my spirit animal chasing me <laughs> until I answered the call. <laughs> so let me know if that helps. Oh, Claire, I don't think I saw your question. I just see hashtag dead. What does that mean? Beautiful, Kokezo, because Kokezo is saying that she believes she's an interdimensional dreamer because she's dreamt of herself as a warrior in different timelines. Wow, epic. That sounds really exciting. Yeah, beautiful. Oh. Okay, so are we good? I hope that I have um, given you different perspective on how you can approach your, your dreaming. I want you to know that another thing is that you have the ability to walk back into your dreams. So the best, part, best time to do this immediately after you wake up, instead of like jotting out of the bed, sit still and then begin to walk back in your consciousness to try to remember the certain events that were happening, right? And in fact, you can do that to the point of actually going back to the dream landscape to receive more information with your semi-consciousness because you, you would have woken up and you went back. I actually did that this morning. It, and sometimes that will feel like you're having a continuous dream, but sometimes you have walked back to the dream to get more information. So this is something you can also do without having to go into the dreamscape, dream landscape. You can just literally close your eyes and then begin to remember. But what you wanna focus on is, you wanna focus on the emotions of the dreams. You want to focus on the, the objects or the symbols that appear important to you. So what are these objects? If there was a flower in there, that's important. If there was a book with a word written, that's what you want to focus on, right? Interestingly, people think that it's about the event and the people in the dream. That's usually not as important as you imagine, right? Like if you dreamt of me, sometimes, yes, I, for example, people I work with do dream of me coming to heal them in the dream landscape, right? Does that mean I am healing them in the dream landscape? It's actually your consciousness using me, the image of joy, to heal you. So sometimes I am actually your higher self in your image, but it's better for your mind to see as your higher self, you know? So that's why I wouldn't obsess too much about who was in the dream, what were they doing? Although it's important to write down, down those those information in your dream interpretations, in your dream journal, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I didn't know that the hopo, no, no, could have also affect the departed. It's a very powerful. However, it definitely makes sense to me. And I'm so glad you brought it up as it is a message to do for my book. Yes, beautiful. Yes, I remember you said he recently transitioned. So what I would do, Claire, is particularly um, midnight, 3 a.m., 6 a.m., do that, right? Do the, the prayer for him, uh, bring him into his consciousness. What you want to send him more than anything is your love for him. And you also really want to tell him, I forgive you, I forgive you. That word is the most powerful you could ever give your, your beloved, those who have departed. I forgive you, I forgive you. It's, it can make that journey so much less stressful for them. Yeah, okay.
So that's it, beloved. Uh, thank you so much for joining me uh, on today's transmission. I really enjoyed it. Uh, this Sunday, I'm going to be doing a Q&A and also a little bit of an energetic update of what's happening energetically. I think Sunday, maybe a day be before the portal. So this will be on Instagram. Come and join me. Uh, and also I'm going to do that tab where you can send in your questions for anything that you want me to, to answer and uh, so forth. Um, so come and join me on Instagram. Otherwise, I will see you next week, every Thursdays, we are doing this. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you so much, everyone. I am glad. Hello, Diamond. Yay, Makosi. Mm, okay, thank you, beloved. Okay, have a good day. <laughs>